Hello guys, welcome back to a civil engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the analyzing this frame. So we have to find out the support reactions and to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for this frame. This frame consists of one beam and supported by the two columns. And this column has only the literal load of 6.6 kip per foot and this beam has a distributed load of 0.8 kips per foot. The beam length is 20 foot and this column length, both columns have the same length of 16 foot. And this is a hinge support and this is a roller support. So we have to find out first the support reactions. For this, let's suppose this is support A and this is support B. So this is a hinge support so it can resist the vertical R, A, Y and this will be the horizontal because it is a hinge support it can take the horizontal load as well while the lower support can only take the vertical load so it will be rb lower support cannot take any horizontal load so all the literal load will be taken only by this support with the hinge support now to find out these unknown reactions let's take an equilibrium equation of the summation of moment at point a is equal to zero. All moment about point A is equal to zero and let's suppose that the clockwise moment is acting as positive and the anti-clockwise moment are taken as negative. Now point A kip per foot distributed load creates clockwise moment about point A. It will bend or it will create clockwise moment about point A. So it is a point A distributed load. So it is point A kips per foot multiplying with the 20 which is the total length multiplying it with the 10 which is the moment arm for this distributed load because this distributed load will act at the center and the center will be the half of this 20 which will be the 10 10 foot that's why we consider 10 foot here for the moment arm while this acts in a clockwise direction Similarly, this little load acting on the column also create clockwise moment about point A. So it is point 6 multiplying with the total distance is 16 foot multiplying with the moment arm. So it will also act at the center of this column. So the center of this column means that the moment arm for this is also 8 foot. So 8 because it is 16 dividing by 2 it will be 8. And now the other force that creates a moment about point A is the RB which creates the anti-clockwise moment about point A. So it will be taken as negative because it will create negative, it will create an anti-clockwise moment so it will be taken as negative. It is our sign convention. RB multiplied by the moment arm and the moment arm for the RB is 20 foot from this point up to this point the distance is 20 foot. So summation of all moments about point A are equal to 0. Now the 20 RB will be equal to 160 plus 76.8. I just transfer this value onto the right side so I got these values and simply 20 RB if I add this it comes out to be 236.8 and RB if I divide this by 20, I got 11.84 kips. It means that the reaction at this end is 11.84 kips. Now to find out the RAY, it is very easy. We just have to take the summation of vertical forces equal to zero. And let's suppose we take that the upward force is taken as positive and the downward force are taken as negative. The only vertical force acting on this frame is this distributed load while this force is not taken into account because there is a horizontal load on the column. So the vertical load is this 0.8 kips and it is acting downward so it will be taken as negative. So minus 0.8 multiplied with the 20 which is the whole distance because it is distributed over the whole distance. And the other load acting is RB which is acting upward plus RB plus R A Y which is also acting in upper direction. So these were all the forces acting 
in vertical direction and we take only vertical forces into consideration. So summation of all vertical forces is equal to zero. We know that the RB is 11.84. So we will put this value here. So RAY will become, this will be 0.8 into 20, multiplying with 20 and minus RB, which is 11.84. So RAY, if I add and subtract, these values I got 4.16 kilo kips. This is kilo pound. So R A Y is 4.16 kips. So here so this is the vertical resistance provided by the hinge support. Now we have to find out the R A X, which is the only unknown in this frame. So to find out the Rx, let's suppose that summation of horizontal forces are equal to zero. And let's suppose there's a force acting in this direction are taken as positive and forces acting in this direction are taken as negative. So the force acting in this direction are, is this uniformly distributed load, 0.6 k per foot. So this will be taken as negative. So it will be minus 0.6 multiplied with the whole length on which it is distributed so it is 16 foot and then it is plus rx because rx acting in the reverse direction to that of the upcoming load and summation of all the forces are equal to zero and rax comes out to be four point uh, it comes out to be nine point six kips so I can write it here, comes out to be 9.6 kips. So this is the horizontal reaction of the hinge. So in order to draw the shear force in bending moment diagram, first we have to draw the free body diagram for this frame, which will be the, these two columns and this single beam. Now I will put the loads and the reaction on this free body frame, free body diagram of the frame. So this column is a reaction here of 4.16 kips and horizontal reaction of 9.6 kips. Similarly, this column is a reaction of 11.84 kips and this beam has been loaded with a 0.8 kip per foot while this column is loaded with a 0.6 kip per foot. And this distance is 20 foot and this distance is 16 foot. The length of or the height of this column is 16 foot. Now we should know that in the case of the frame, to analyze the frame, we should remember that this joint should be in equilibrium. Now 4.16 will also be transferred here in this way. It will be acting in the downward direction in order to balance with this reaction. Now, similarly to balance, to make an equilibrium this joint, we should transfer this in opposite direction. So this 4.16 will be acting in upper direction and this is in equilibrium now with this downward force of 4.16 acting downward. Similarly, 11.84 is acting upward, so 11.84 will be here acting downward. And in order to make this joint equilibrium, it will also act in upper direction here. So 11.84 will be acting in upper direction. Now after putting all the value of the reaction and the forces in the frame, we can draw easily the shear force now. So let's suppose this is again the beam and these are the two columns. We know this force is 9.6 acting in this direction. So we will bring this here up to the 9.6 kips. This will be the shear force diagram for this beam, for this frame. So 9.6 acting here in this direction. And then there is a horizontal load of 0.6 kip per foot up to the distance of 16 foot. So 0.6 will be multiplied with 16. It comes out to be 9.6 kip. 
this force was acting in this direction so let's suppose this was positive while this force is acting in inward direction so it will be negative so I choose this is a negative and this was a positive because we should assign one positive and the other one negative if this one is positive the other one which is acting in the opposite direction will be taken as negative so 9.6 was acting in positive direction so this makes it in negative direction so 9.6 it means if we add minus 9.6 to this plus 9.6 it will become zero here because 9.6 was acting in upward in this direction while this was the other horizontal force was acting inward so it brings here zero this was the shear force for this column this column has no horizontal or the lateral load so the shear force for this column is zero now we remain only with the beam the beam has the upward reaction of 4.16 at the start so it is 4.16 it will move tip upward and then there is a load of 0.8 tip per foot up to the distance of 20 foot so 0.8 multiplying with the 20 so it comes out to be if you multiply these two values so this comes out to be 16 it means that there is a load of 16 kip acting in the downward direction on this beam so 4.16 is acting in upward direction and this 16 is acting in downward direction so if I 4.16 is acting upward and if I subtract the 16 which was acting in downward direction so I got 11.84 in negative because it is plus 4.16 it is minus 16 so I got minus 11.84 kips. So it means I will bring this arrow from this position to the negative 11.484. So this is plus shear force and this is negative shear force. Because 4.16 was acting upward. So this was the reaction of this beam. And then there was a load of 0.8 kip per foot downward. So I just subtract this 4.16 from the downward load which is minus 16 so it becomes minus 11.84 so I bring this arrow from 4.16 positive to the negative minus 11.4 so this was the shear force diagram for this beam now I will I'll again draw the free body for the bending moment so it will be like in this way so this will be the reference lines for the frame now to draw the bending moment diagram I will take help from the shear force diagram so the area of this box will be the bending moment diagram for this column this column has a shear box in positive let's suppose direction so the area we have to find the area of this shear box the height is let's suppose 9.6 and this length is 16 foot we know that the column length is 16 foot so we have to find the area of this box let's suppose this is a1 so we find the a1 and it is a triangle box we see here so we should find the area it is half base into height or we can say half base is 16 let's suppose and the height is 9.6 so if you multiply if you find out the area of this triangle it comes out to be 76.8 this is the area of this shear box so it means if we start from here so it will be 76.8 at this point and it will be in the unit of kip foot because we we only have the units of kip and foot so the moment will be kip foot so 76.8 foot kip foot is the bending moment value here at this point we just found out the area of this triangle and it will be the bending moment value here at this point similarly in case of the frame we should always keep in mind that the bending moment value acting at this joint will also be the bending moment value acting here at this point so it will be also 76.8 foot kip foot 76.8 kip foot is the bending moment acting at this point now we have to find out the area of this box 
But to find out the area of this triangle, we know the height is 4.16, but we don't know this, this length. Let's suppose this is x. So to find out this x, we know that 4.16 is acting upward. So 4.16 is acting upward minus there is a force of 0.8 multiplying with x equal to 0. So the point where the shear force becomes equal to 0 is unknown to us. So we put the 4.16 in upper direction and minus 0.8 with the x we multiply with the x because we don't know that how much is the force acting on this beam to make the shear force equal to zero so by finding out the x from here we got here 5.2 so it will be in the unit of foot so this distance is 5.2 foot and the remaining distance, this distance, will be the 20 minus 5.2. So this will be 14.8 foot. So we know this distance now. So we can find the area of this box, which will be A2. So A2 area will be half. This is also a triangle. Base into height, let's suppose base is 5.2 and height is 4.16. 5.2 into 4.16. If you multiply, so we get A2 equal to 10.81. So this is the area of this box, which is acting in positive direction. So if we have to add this to the 76.8, if we add this 10.81 to 76.8, we got, if we add this with 76.8, we got 87.6. This will be 87.6 here. 87.6 kip foot. This is the bending moment here value at this point. At this point. Now we have to find out the area of this box which is acting in negative direction. So it will be the in negative direction it will be taken as negative. So the area of this box will be A3. So A3 will be equal to half base into height base is 14.8 and height is 11.84 so it becomes 87.6 but in negative direction because this box is a negative shear box so it will be negative bending moment value so 87.6 was positive and this is a negative so if we add this minus 87.6 with this plus 87.6 it will become zero here so we have zero bending moment value here at this end of the beam, of the beam, while the column is no shear force value, so it will also have zero bending moment. Hope you guys understand how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily 7 engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.